Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the bending test and inelastic bending deformation. There are many engineering structures and machine parts which are often under bending moments. The main objective of the bending test is to simulate the actual loading conditions and test the specimen under such conditions. Typically, there are two methods of bending tests. One, the three-point bending test and two, the four-point bending test. In three-point bending test, a concentrated load, P, is applying at the mid-span of the beam. In four-point bending test, two half loads are applying from equal distance from the supports. This will cause a constant bending moment between these two loads. Therefore, the four-point bending test provides better material characteristics. Now we are going to look at a typical four-point inelastic pure bending test on a rectangular steel beam. Now we're going to learn about inelastic bending. The Flexure formulas sigma m equals mc over i or sigma equals negative my over i, which we discussed in the previous video, are only valid if the material behaves in a linear elastic manner. Consider an elastoplastic material with the shown stress strain diagram. If the yield strength sigma y of material is exceeded at any portion of the member or the material have a non-linear stress strain diagram, the flexure formula is not valid. To better explain the inelastic bending, let's take a look at the relationship between moment and curvature during the bending test. A typical moment versus curvature diagram for steel under pure bending is shown below. Three main regions can be defined on this diagram. 1. Elastic, 2. Elastoplastic, and 3. Plastic region. MY is the yield moment, which is the moment that corresponds to the first yield of the cross section. It is also called maximum elastic moment. MP is the plastic moment, that is the moment that corresponds to the fully plastification of the cross section. Points 1 and 2 are located in elastic regions. This means that stress varies linearly with the y distance. At point 1, the normal stress, sigma x, does not exceed the yield strength, sigma y. Therefore, Hooke's law applied and the maximum stress, sigma m, can be determined using the flexure formula. Sigma m equals mc over i. At point 2, as the bending moment m increases, sigma m reaches the yield strength sigma y. Using the flexure formula and solving it for my, the value of the yield moment or maximum of elastic moment is my equals sigma y times i over c. Point 3 is located in elastoplastic region. This means as the bending moment increases further, the plastic zones develop in the member. However, between the plastic zones, an elastic zone stands in which stress varies linearly with the y distance. At point 5, as the bending increases, the plastic zones expand, and at the limit, the deformation is fully plastic. Remember that unlike the stress distribution, the strain distribution on the cross section is always linear, even if the stress distribution is not. One of the important section properties is the elastic section modulus, denoted S. Let's assume an elastic rectangular cross section. From the flexure formula, we can calculate the yield moment as follows. MY equals sigma Y times I over C. I and C are cross sectional properties, therefore we can define the elastic section modulus as I over C. Therefore, S equals to MY over sigma Y. In other words, the elastic section modulus relates the yield stress of materials to the yield moment. For rectangular cross section with the shown dimensions, the elastic section modulus is 
base times height to the power of 2 over 6. Another important section property is the plastic section modulus, denoted as Z. Let's assume a fully plastic rectangular cross section. Based on the shown stress distribution, the upper portion of cross section is under compression and the lower part of cross section is under tension. In order to meet the equilibrium conditions in this cross section, all compressive forces must be equal to the all tension forces. We know that the resultant force for each of the two shapes of stress distribution is graphically equivalent to the volume of each one, which is acting through the centroid of each volume. Therefore, Fc equals Ft equals sigma y times base times height over 2. Fc and Ft are couple forces, meaning that they are equal in opposite direction of each other. The couple moment of these two forces are the plastic moment Mp, which is Fc times height over 2 equals sigma y times base times height to the power of 2 over 4. The plastic section modulus is equal to Mp over sigma y, thus Mp equals Z times sigma y. In other words, the plastic section modulus relates the yield stress sigma y of materials to the plastic moment Mp. For rectangular cross section with the shown dimensions, the plastic section modulus is base times height to the power of 2 over 4. The third section property is called shape factor, denoted as K. It is defined as the ratio of plastic moment Mp to yield moment My. If we substitute the Mp and My with sigma y times Zx and sigma y times Sx, respectfully, shape factor can be also defined as the ratio between the plastic section modulus to the elastic section modulus. Shape factor relates the plastic moment Mp to the yield moment My. We show that for rectangular cross section, S equals base times height to the power of 2 over 6, and Z equals base times height to the power of 2 over 4. Therefore, the shape factor of a rectangle is 1.5. Now we're going to look at an example of inelastic bending. A beam of the cross section shown is made of a steel that is assumed to be elastoplastic with E equals 200 gigapascals and sigma Y equals 240 megapascals. For bending about the Z axis, determine the bending moment at which yield first occurs and the plastic zones at the top and the bottom of the bar, which are 30 millimeters thick. As we know, the first step to solve the problem is to find the location of the neutral axis, or as we call it, NA axis. Because of the symmetry in this example, the centroid is located in the middle of the cross section. Therefore, Y bar equals 45 millimeters from the bottom of the cross section. The second step is to find the moment of inertia about the neutral axis, which will be 3.578 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeters to the power of 4. The largest distance from the neutral axis to the point farthest away from the neutral axis, C, is half times height equals 45 millimeters. Therefore, the yield moment can be calculated using the Flechter formula. Thus, my equals 19.1 times 10 to the power of 3 newton meters. If the plastic zones at the top and bottom of the bar are 30 millimeters thick, then stress distribution on the beam can be shown as follows. We have an elastoplastic materials. Since the direction of the moment is not given, we assume that the top portion is under compression and the lower portion is under tension. The resultant force for each of the two shapes of stress distribution is graphically equivalent to the volume of each one, which acts through the centroid of each volume. Therefore, Ft1 equals Fc1 equals 240 times 30 times 60 equals 432 kilonewtons. Ft2 equals Fc2 equals half times 240 times 15 times 30 equals 54 kilonewtons. 
The bending moment is the sum of the couple moment of each couple force. M equals FT1 times 60 plus FT2 times 20 equals 27 kilonewton millimeters. Therefore, M equals 27 kilonewton millimeters. As we expected, this moment is greater than the yield moment MY, but it is less than the plastic moment MP. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab.